So this demonstration is concerning a Google Sheet spreadsheet. And what we're gonna use it for is to record student results. But not just record the results from multiple tests, but to actually collate them into an average. And in some cases, you might want a weighted result. So a weighted result basically means that you assign more importance to certain exams and it works out the overall weighted result from higher end exams and lower end exams. So maybe a class test and maybe a Christmas test or some other summative exam. So this is an example of the spreadsheet and either I have shared this with you directly through Google Drive if you're a member of seatunions.com or alternatively you've got the link out there in the public and it's taken you to it and I'm going to step you through um, making a copy of it and using it for yourself. Now there will be updates and improvements made to it but you can see that um, in this example I have got nine students entered and you can see that for seven exams, seven maths exams, I've entered results for them. It's calculated percentages and I've given it weights. So I'm just going to talk you through in the next couple of minutes how the spreadsheet works and the different levels of which you can use it. So to access the spreadsheet, I've shared it with you. So if you maybe you followed a link, which will take you directly to it. But if I've shared it with you, you'll find it on the Share With Me uh, folder in your Google Drive. So once you can see it, it's called Template. You can open it up. Once you get in there, you'll notice that you only have read access. So right now I don't have access to change anything in the spreadsheet, but that's okay. So the idea is, is that I'll make a copy for myself. So file, make a copy. I can call it whatever I want. So maybe I want a copy for my second year geography class. And you can pick whatever folder you wish. So now the copy that's opened up here, you now have edit rights to it and it is your copy. So it's in your Google Drive. So you're not going to affect anybody else by changing it. So you can see that the spreadsheet's made up of three different sheets here and you can flip through them down below. You've got percentages, marks and weighted marks. So they go from the most simple up to the more complex. So we'll start off with percentages. So the percentages spreadsheet is designed to take up to 10 tests for up to 32 students and it's designed to take the percentage results from those tests. So it's very straightforward. I've got some fake names in here. So John O'Donnell here. So if he scores 60% in his first test, you simply have to type in the figure. And if he scores 50% in the second test and so on, you can see that the average mark is automatically calculated for you once you leave the cell. So if those three, they're given equal weight and the average is calculated. Now, if John missed the test, that number is not counted. So again, the average is just reduced to the average of two. If, however, John scored zero in a test, it's important to put in the zero so that the average is included. So leave out any figure if the student didn't take part in the test, but put in zero if the student happened to score zero marks on the test. So the second sheet that I provided is the mark sheet. So you can click on the marks there. So the marks is a slightly more complicated sheet, but it does in essence the same thing. This time it allows you to enter tests that weren't scored out of 100, or in other words, haven't been yet converted to a percentage. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at test one. You can see now that test one has got two columns and we're only ever added in the white boxes. So we can edit the student names. We can edit the test name. We can edit how many marks were available for that test and we can enter each student's marks. But try to avoid editing anything in the blue or the turquoise colors because they're automatically calculated. So for example, if we're in geography and I want to put in a test on the ice age, which I haven't a clue if that's on the course, but let's do it. So let's imagine that I'm marking this test out of 50 points. So imagine there's 50 points going for this test. So John scored 50 out of 50. So I just put in his mark. I'm not putting in his percentage. And of course, that will calculate his percentage out of 50 and give him his average mark so far. 
The next test that John took was on uh, mountains. And the mountains exam was marked out of 100 marks. So out of the 100 marks, John scored 80. Now obviously if it's out of 100, the percentage and the marks are going to match up. But again, the average is now calculated using the 80% and the 100% to give you a 90% average and so on. So this is a really handy spreadsheet if, for example, you're using Google Classroom and you're putting in results like 40 and so on in a test so where students can score 35. So the thing to look out for, I suppose, in this one is that you don't give them more marks than the test is worth. So, for example, if I give 60 marks and the test is only worth 40, that should stand out as a problem, as should this, but this one mightn't be as obvious depending on their other results. So again, just be careful of that. Um, there are ways, of course, of reducing that error, which we can update in a future release. But for now, that should be as simple as that. So don't forget to put in the total mark for the test, and of course, give the test a name as well, just for records. So this is the third sheet. This is the weighted mark sheet. And it's probably the more complicated of all the sheets. Again, same rule applies. The teacher can edit the white areas. The white cells are good for editing, and we try to avoid editing the blue or the turquoise colored cells. So just like the last example, we give each test a name. So let's pretend we're switching now to maths. So there's algebra. And we are going to give it out of how many marks were available for that. So let's say it was out of 100 marks. So everything is normal so far. And John here scored 75 out of 100. So he's getting 75%. You can see that there's an issue here with the weighted. So what the weighted allows us to do is assign a weight to certain exams. So let's uh, give this a weight of 10. Now on its own, that weight doesn't mean anything because there are no other tests recorded. So right now, if John scores 75 out of 100, he's getting 75% in that test, and overall he's getting a 75% weight result and 75% average. But let's imagine that I'm trying to get this total result and I'm taking into exams like Christmas. Now the Christmas exam is obviously a wee bit more serious than the algebra class exam, so I want to weight it differently. So the Christmas exam, let's say, is still out of 100 marks. Let's say this time that I think it's three times as important as the algebra exam. So that would give me 30 there. So the numbers are kind of arbitrary. It's about the relationship to each other. I could have used one and three, as long as the relationship is the way you want it to be. So in other words, I'm putting a weight of 30 out of 40 on the Christmas exam. And the poor algebra exam is just worth 10 out of 40. So a quarter versus three quarters. So now you can see what happens, that if he was to score 100% in his algebra exam, but if he wasn't to do as good in his Christmas exam, let's say he just scored 50 out of 100, of course his Christmas percentage is 50 and his algebra percentage is 100, but look what it's done to the weighted result. His weighted result is now 63%, whereas the standard average or mean is 75%. So remember, the 75% is treating both exams like they were equal. Whereas the weighted exam is taking into account that that Christmas exam was more important in our eyes. So let's play around with this. Let's change this. Let's go even higher. So let's say it's 50 to 10. And as you change the weighting, so now the Christmas is five times more important. And you can see that the weighted result has dropped significantly. What happens if he does really well in the Christmas exam? Let's say he scored 100% in the Christmas exam, but let's say he scored only two marks out of 100 or 2% in the algebra exam. So he really did poorly in the algebra exam, small class exam, he only scored 2%, but he really came around again for the Christmas exam and he got himself back up and he scored 100%. Well, the average result is 51%. So is that a true telling of the student's ability? So you could argue either way, but I would argue it isn't because for the smaller class exam, maybe he was missing a couple of days or so on. But for the Christmas exam, he really worked hard and it was a bigger exam. So you can see that the weighted mark is now 84%. 
So you can continue this across, obviously, for up to 10 exams. And if those get tricky, it gets tricky to keep that balance right. And again, I use 10 and 50. I could easily have used one and five, as long as the relationship between the numbers is what counts. So again, it only adds up to six, but I'm still getting the same result. So that weighting is important. So maybe you want to give your class tests a weighting of one each, whereas Christmas might be worth three and summer might be worth five and so on. You might get different results for CBAs and so on. Again, this approach only takes into account results that are recorded. So it's not averaging across 10 automatically. It's only averaging for the ones that you've entered. So again, you have to be careful here because if the student missed the algebra exam, his average is calculated over just one result, whereas his weighted exam is calculated over two results. So that's important to know. So you're better off putting in whatever he scored in the exam and just be aware that some students, if they miss an exam like that, you may have to come up with a different way of giving them their final result. That's up to you. So that's your three different sheets summarized. You can play around with them. If you ever feel like you've made a mess of them, you can just go back into your Google Drive, find the template that's been shared with you and make another copy and you can work from there. You can do things like if you have no intention of using, let's say the mark sheet is not for you, you can just use the little menu beside the mark sheet to delete that sheet. If you want to make several sheets of the one type for one class, you can also use these little menus to duplicate sheets and you can also rename each of the tabs at the bottom. So there's a lot of flexibility here and there's a few other little features we could add. We could add automatically calculating the grade, maybe H1, H2, H3 for higher level leave insert. Um, we can also do error correction and things like that. So these are little features that we can add over time and try to improve the spreadsheet for everybody.